Hello everyone and welcome. The colour of the year for Close to My Heart is Wildberry and I've only just recently started using it and anybody that knows me knows that I'm not really a pink or purpley sort of girl when it comes to scrapbooking. I like doing neutrals and blues and greens so it might come as a surprise to some of you that I purchased this bundle. I really love this stamp set. The die cuts are wonderful. The sticker sheet with the printed papers are fabulous. I'm not going to flip through everything today. What I'm going to concentrate on is this Wildberry cardstock. In this packet, there's some gorgeous designs with foiling. So you can see the silver, the gold. This one's got a little bit of a holographic type touch. And then there's also UV coated cardstock as well which might be a bit harder to pick up on camera but I have a plan to change all of this into something else so what I'm going to do is cut some panels at four inches by five and a quarter inches so that will give me a card panel and then I will be back to show you what I have planned for some of this paper. So here are my card panels I have cut them a quarter of an inch smaller so they're four by five and a quarter so they're quarter of an inch smaller than a normal A2 card. So let's start off with this gorgeous floral. I'm going to bring in some archival black ink and you might be guessing what I'm going to do. Everybody that knows me knows I love a good black and white card but I'm going to turn this one into a black and shiny card. Now don't stress when you're doing this the ink is going to go over the top of that foil design, but it acts a bit like a resist. So you can see how it's looking all smudgy here, but that's not going to happen once we wipe all of that off. I'm just going to bring in another piece of paper here to hold it so I try not to get too inky. And then it's just a case of keeping on blending this ink over the top. I don't have to be super careful starting off the edge or anything like that because I'm just blending the same colour all the way across and I'm just keeping going back in with this to give a nice dark tone to it and you can see where I'm going. This is just changing the look of this all together. So I'm just going to bring in an old face cloth that I've got and I'm going to buff off the ink that's gone over the top of that foiling design. So let me pick that up and just show you closer. You can see this is the part that I haven't buffed off yet, but the ink has been resisted by the foil. So it still retains its gorgeous shiny look, but this gives a totally different look to the original paper. So you can see where I'm heading with this sort of treatment to these card panels. You can do this for a scrapbooking layout as well. It doesn't just have to be a card panel, but I decided I wanted to make a series of cards for this video. I am going to bring in some other options of how to treat this paper to give it a different look. So hang around, some other color combinations. Now I'm going to bring in my second one and a different ink to use just to show you. I'm going to use Harbour and do exactly the same thing with this. You can can bring different inks in but you do have to be careful with what you use because some inks probably won't look as good as others depending on what color is on the base layer of these types of foil papers. So with the magic of video you can see that the harbor does give a little bit of a different tone to it than using the archival black on top. It might not be picking up on camera so much but this one here is a much deeper color. Now I'm going to go in with some Distress Oxide inks and this is going to give a different effect as well. These are much more creamier to blend with. So I'm starting off with Mode Lawn in the middle and coming out towards the edges. And now I'm going to come in with Black Soot and come in from the edge towards where the Mode Lawn is. Now I'm going to come back in with my mode lawn and go over the top and I'm being quite heavy handed with this because I want that green color to come through. It does fade into the paper a little bit but you can still get a wonderful look by going over top of another base layer that's had the foiling treatment and then back in with the black soot 
just to deepen up the edges of the card. And now we'll do the reveal by buffing off the ink that's on top of the foiled areas. And this just looks so, so pretty. I love how this one looks with the blending of the colors. So I'm going to bring in the original papers here and put these on top. You can see what a difference just a little bit of ink blending will give you to the actual papers. This really does switch things up a bit and I love the deepness and the richness of the ones that I've done the ink blending on. Now I'm gonna move from the foil designs to the UV coated design paper. The UV coating is the same sort of thing as a foil, but it's a UV coating allowing the color to shine through from below. And underneath the UV coating is the Wildberry cardstock. For this one, I'm going to do some blending in some layers. So I'm gonna start off with Candy Apple. And what I like to do when I set out my ink pads is put the blending tool in the lid and then hopefully I don't get confused as I go along, which has been known to happen in the past. I've picked up the wrong one and ink it up and I'm sure you might have seen it on previous videos where I've used distress oxide inks but that's okay if you do mix things up you can just get a piece of paper and just press it in and wipe it off until the contaminated ink has gone from the ink pad then I'm going to come in with chip sapphire now this one's going to show the wildberry color underneath. So it's not a total makeover changing the whole entire colors like I did with the foiling. So there will be some pink on this, but it just gives a totally different look to it being a solid wildberry color. If you're going to use different inks with this, I would cut some tiny strips and experiment with the colors before you actually do this on a large piece because you might find that other colors will not mix as well as what these ones are here. These tones I've tried out and I find that they work quite well, but you don't wanna get a muddy look. And you can see what I'm doing here is blending the colors back in over top of each other so that it's not a stripe where the colors meet. I'm gonna come back in with candy apple again. And I think that I'm happy with how that looks. So I'm gonna buff off the ink that's sitting on top of the UV coating. And that's resisted it quite nicely. So you still get the shine from the UV coating. I'm really hoping that that is picking up on the camera. So let's move on and do the other ones. I won't make you sit through the whole process of these. I'm just going to put these together and then I'll be back with some comparisons and some finished projects. Before I show you the final cards, I wanted to show you the comparison of the UV coating with the original and also the fact that I have gone around the edges with some black soot just to deepen up the contrast between the edge of this cardstock and the panel that I'm going to put it on. It just adds a little bit of an extra layer of depth to the card panel. Because these have been done with Distress Oxide inks, you could add water flicks and then sponge that off, but then the wild berry is going to come through because you're taking away the layer of the ink that you've put on there. So let's have a look at the difference between these panels. This one has got a grid line on it and it's quite subtle, but when you ink over the top of it, it really picks it up and it does stand out. And I think that just looks fabulous like that. Here's the basket weave type pattern and then this one is a chevron type pattern or an arrow pattern with the different layers of ink. This one here I started off with candy apple in the middle and then put black soot around the outside. This one is just all totally black soot. So I'm just going to let these dry for a little bit. Distress Oxide does stay wet for a little while and then I'm going to come back with the completed projects that I'm making with these panels. So here are the finished cards. You can see the difference here with the UV coating and the treatment with the color on it. I'll hold these up so you can see the shine and the difference. You don't lose the shine at all. 
And depending on how I've matted these, I've kept these fairly simple. For this one here, I've used Sunbeam holographic paper and gold embossing for the thank you. This is a simple stitched bracket and I've used the For All Occasions stamp set for the thank you. And this one here, I've just used some gold metallic paper and once again, gold embossing. And I decided with this one that I would put that on silver. It just seemed to look nice on the silver and of course, silver embossing. Here are the finished projects with the foiled paper. I've used silver glitter on the frame from stitched rectangles. I've used the outside bit and I've kept these sentiments as just strips because I felt like I didn't want to cover up these backgrounds. This one here, I've got the Sunbeam holographic paper. And this one here, I've realized I've actually used Twinkle Toes because it had a bit more of a purple reflect because I get that with the UV coating showing the purple through. I've put some gold glitter gems or silver glitter gems on all of these projects. And then with this one, because the background wasn't as decorative as this floral or this design here, I've used the simple stitch bracket on that as well. Now, while you're here, I wanted to show you something else that I worked on with this sort of technique. Quite some time ago, we had this floral and I basically did the same treatment. So this one is with black soot and mowed lawn. This one here is with harbour. This one's with black soot. And this one has the black soot, sapphire and candy apple. And I really love how these look as well as just complete backgrounds. I haven't matted them like I have with these ones here. I've just put them straight on to some card bases that I just had in my stash that I've had hanging around for years and years and years. And I thought these came up really, really nicely as well. So I wanted to show you these as well. In case like me, you've got some foil papers where you didn't use this because of the color tone on the background it didn't suit anything at the time but making them into card panels really I think brings these to life and gives them a totally different look thank you so much for watching along as I transformed these wild berry foil papers and UV coated papers into something totally different happy crafting and bye for now <music>